Hey friends, Dave here with Transfer Express, and today we are covering some troubleshooting and basic tips to ensure you're getting quality, consistent results with your screen printed and digital heat transfers every single time. Now, whether you are a pro or a beginner, there's going to be something that we're gonna to cover today that can help you and your t-shirt business get the best results with your heat press. So are you ready to press it like it's hot? I am, let's get to it. If you are new to Transfer Express, we are the world's largest supplier of custom screen printed and digital heat transfers, heat presses, free customizable designs, wholesale apparel, and expert advice to help grow your t-shirt business. If you haven't already, subscribe. We're kicking out new videos like this one every single week. When we're talking about heat transfers, there's always three elements at play. Time, temperature, and pressure. And all three of those we could set right here on our press. Now we're gonna be using our Goof Proof Screen Printed Plastisol transfers here today. So we could check out the instruction sheet that came with our order for all of the correct settings. Here we have instructions for 100% cotton or poly blends and also 100% polyester. Since our garment we're using today is going to be a cotton dominant heather blend, uh, we're gonna opt for the settings on the left side of the sheet here. So 365 degrees, four to six seconds for time and a medium to firm pressure or a six to eight on a hot tronics press. Now back here at our press, setting our temperature is super easy. All we're gonna have to do is click the middle button to enter the menu where we are set our temperature and adjust using the buttons on either side. If you don't have a Hotronics press, we recommend bumping the temperature by at least 10 degrees. Now next, we're going to use the menu button again to set our time. Now this Hotronics auto open clamshell press that we're using today does have a dual stage timer. So there's one more timer menu before we exit out of all of the menus. Now, it's worth mentioning on almost all heat presses, if you don't exit the menu, the heating element will not heat up. And if it has any auto features, like the auto open on this press right here, that it's not going to work. Just like the magnetic auto open feature here on this press. Now, it's not going to lock down when our menu here is active. But once we turn it off, it locks right down. Now, without the correct temperature and time, our inks are not going to cure correctly leading to the transfer peeling up or cracking if the inks are cooked just a little too much. That's also known as over curing. Now, once we have our temperature and time set, it's time to set our pressure. So without any garments on the press, we could close the press and see what our digital readout looks like here on the display. One thing I do love about the Hotronics Auto Clam Infusion Presses is that digital pressure readout. It really simplifies setup and takes a lot of the guesswork out of setting up your press. But if your press doesn't have a pressure reading, that is a-okay. Now you could take small pieces of paper about the size of a dollar bill and place them at each corner of the press, half on and half off the platen. Now if you could pull them out easily, your pressure is too light. You should be locked in there pretty good. Now with a little movement for a medium to firm pressure. Now you could always adjust your pressure using the knob at the top of the press. With too little pressure, the transfer may not apply or fail when washed. With too high of pressure, you may squish the inks leading to excess ink spreading, making small text illegible and closing in small negative spaces. Now I personally like to preheat the lower platen when I first start printing each day. I'll run the press through a few cycles or at least 15 to 30 seconds of contact with the upper platen to get everything warmed up. Now we're going to load our garment on the press and there are several ways that you could do this. It's mostly personal preference. Now I like threading the garment onto the press which is opening up our shirt like a pillowcase over a pillow and aligning that right on there. Now of course you could also just lay right on over top just like this. Or if you don't wanna be so far underneath the heating element, you could always turn it around and be able to print upside down as well. Now, regardless of how you are loading the shirt on the press, ensure you have all collars and seams all off of the printing area. Without that good, firm, even pressure, our transfer may appear to apply fine, but it may start to deteriorate prematurely when laundered. 
So it's best to slide those obstructions off of the printing area. Now there may be some cases where you can't avoid any obstructions and that's when you could use a smaller platen if your press has the capabilities for interchangeable platens or you could use a print perfect pad or a mouse pad to raise the printing area. You will need a flat, firm surface for these transfers. So unfortunately, things like uh, heat printing pillows will be too soft and can affect the proper application. Next, we're going to pre-press our garment. Now in this step, we're removing any moisture and wrinkles in the fabric itself. The moisture is what we are most worried about. T-shirts soak up a lot of moisture just out of the air like a sponge. And then when heat press, they release that moisture as steam, which is going up and this could be very bad if the moisture in the garment is evaporating while we're trying to push inks down. Now that's gonna to lead to some bubbling or wrinkling in the inks or transfers that are not completely adhered to the fibers of the shirt. Now another thing to check during your pre-press is how much the pressure has shifted with the garment now on the press. You can see we have increased the pressure readout by one by adding the garment. We were at seven. Now we're adding it. Now we're ready to place the transfer on the shirt. Now before pressing for the first time, I like to double check all of the elements and details look like they should. Now this way, if I'm unsure of a detail or something looks off, I could press the design on a test garment instead of possibly ruining an expensive garment for my order. Now this one does look perfect to me, so we could go straight down onto the garment. Now with our screen printed transfers, we'll always provide you with at least one extra transfer for reference or testing. Now one common issue we see is prints being too low, the dreaded belly print. Of course, you could use one of these cool placement rulers to help out uh, with your placement, or you could always eyeball it using your fingers. Now we've got an awesome placement and positioning video that we'll link right here and down in the description below. Now, once we're all set with the placement, this one being a tall graphic, we're going to keep our design no more than an inch down from the bottom of collar. And now it's time to press. Now, because our instruction sheet told us to peel hot, we're going to peel the transfer carrier away immediately in a nice, smooth and even motion. You'll notice that the inks appear to sit down into the fibers of the garment and it's not sitting like a sticker on top of the fabric. This is a sign of a perfectly applied heat transfer. Now it's important to note that we didn't use any cover sheets or Teflon covers for our application here today. Placing anything between the transfer and that heating element is going to block the heat. For screen printed transfers, you need to ensure the correct temperature is reaching those inks. Now some cold peel transfers do require a cover sheet, but they will be included with your order and the instructions will say to use that cover sheet during application. This is mainly with uh, transfers with plastic carriers that can have that static buildup and may cause the transfer to peel early when the press opens. Now, if your transfer is not applying correctly with the instructions that came with your order or following the steps that we did here today, it's time to check the heat on your heat press. Now you could use an IR thermometer just like this one to check the surface temperature of your heating element. I always recommend going to each corner, looking at each corner in the bottom and then also right in the middle as well. And these IR temp guns are great, but with the nonstick coating on the heating element uh, up here, there's a wide margin of error with the IR reflection. So you could get a general idea for the temperature. So it may be up to 20 degrees off in either direction. We really love the affordable heat press test strips that measure the heat of your press when the pressure is actually applied. We'll link those right here in this video and down in the description below if you wanted to pick some of those up. They're also included in our heat press application kit. That is where you'll also find uh, this awesome handy Transfer Express placement ruler. Now, if you don't have test strips or a temperature gun and your transfer is failing in say like one spot or area, you could try rotating the garment on the press to try another area of the press to press that transfer. So if we were having issues up here and now our issues move down here, there's probably a cold spot in this area of the press. The free samples you received when signing up for an account are great for this. And if you ever need more, all you have to do is ask. We'll link them right up here as well and in the description below. 
Now, if those other transfers are having issues too, it's most likely your press. Time to double check the temperature and pressure again. Now, if the other test transfer applies fine, you should contact us immediately. Submitting a resolution in the resolution center of your dealer dashboard connects you to the experts that can look up the specifics of your order and offer tailored solutions for your specific project. We are dedicated to the success of your t-shirt business, so we're going to do everything in our power to make it right. Now, do you have any troubleshooting tips of your own? Maybe some techniques you use for perfect heat printing results? Have an idea for a topic you'd like us to cover in an upcoming video? Just let us know down in the comment section below. We love hearing from you guys. Now be sure you subscribe to stay up to date on all of the heat printing tips, tricks, and advice that we're dropping every single week here on the Transfer Express YouTube channel. But until next time, I'm Dave. Happy pressing.